How's it going? Good. Um, just open it up for questions. Um, you know, like for me, it's the uh, um, really the interview process to to get with these guys is what I really look forward to. Um, you know, and because and, um, you're going to be able to see them work out, you're going to see the uh, the combine, the pro days, the watch the tape, but to be able to just kind of get a feel of their personality, their FBI, the problem solving, uh, things of that nature. That that's the real benefit I know for me. Yeah, I just look. I think that um, between uh, Brad and myself, the success we've had in places that we've been um, has has really been that way, and that's that's what it comes from. And you you want to be a good team, you have to draft well, and then you um, um, and then you re-sign those guys. I mean, that's that that's your core, and and then you find the right pieces of free agents to to fill in with. So, um, so I just we both believe that, and and um, so I think you got to be careful. You, you know, you want to go uh, spend top dollar on a free agent that's not your own. Um, you want to know everything about that player before you bring them into your locker room. I mean, you can see the tape and all these, but whereas your own guys, you pay top dollar for your own guys that are worthy from production because you know everything about them, right? So uh, it's just it's something we believe in. It's something that uh, we're going to continue to, to do. Hold on one second. You spent a lot of time asking a couple questions about your coordinators and the opportunities they're going to have. Yeah, it, very meaningful. The, you know, the continuity of the staff. I mean, those guys, the core of the staff, no different than the core of the players, has been together now since 21. And to me, that's very important. And uh, this is the second year in a row that I didn't think I was going to be able to have them back between he and AG and some of the other coaches. And, and it's worked out. So um, we're, we're fortunate. And, uh, and I just think you're so much further along, you know, with what you do. And you've evolved so much over a three-year period when you're all together. Like, for example, Ben knows exactly what I'm thinking. You know, we're to the point now where he knows exactly what I want, how I think, just like I know how he thinks. Um, and AG and FIP. And so... There's so many things that you just you can skip over these steps that have already been done through a three-year period, and you're just so much more efficient, so much better. And it happens with the players too. You know, they know what we expect. They know, and, and so now we're out of this. You know, you're out of 101. You're into 401. Um, and and that's the beauty of the continuity of the staff. You know, obviously we added some coaches. Um, you know, I appreciate the guys that were here. That it, you know, it just wasn't able to. It wasn't a fit. And. Uh, you know, but to be able to get Terrell Williams, somebody that I've had, uh, I've had experience with, I think he is—he's the best D-line coach in the league. If he's not, he's certainly right up there. Um, I think he knows how to develop. He's got experience in game planning, um, and he's going to be beneficial for our guys up front. Deshae Townsend uh, played a long time, coached a long time. Uh, he's going to be able to deliver exactly what AG wants in the back end, um, and. And so those guys are going to be vital. And then certainly Jim O'Neill is a def defensive assistant. has been a coordinator in this league uh, and, and has a wealth of experience. So those guys are going to be good for us defensively, really help AG uh, finish the vision of what we're looking for. Um, I don't know. I, I do know this: the league goes in trends, and and um, you know, I, I there may be something to that. There could be, um, you know, I, I 
You know, we, we've been able to have success really over a three-year period here, and so I think there's something to it. Uh, I do know this, though. There's plenty of great coaches in this league that have not been players in the NFL. So you can find a good coach anywhere that's done it. It's just a matter of finding the right person. Hold on, right here. I was just wondering the impact of the locker room with having Jalen Reeves Bay back. Yeah. Listen, I think it's huge. Uh, and and Jerm was one of those guys that, that he was a core player for us. And and he's the best special teams player in the league. And to be able to get him back again, you know, he was somebody who was here in 21. Um, and then he was a free agent, goes to Houston, and then be able to get him back again uh, last year and the production he had, all that he could bring for us. Uh, is a core player, but also defensively. There's things he can do on defense for us, plays in dime, helps in third down, can rush, can cover. Uh, but to be able to get him re-signed was huge. And uh, he's a vital part of what we do. He is part of the foundation, in my opinion. No, I, I mean, I, I would say, look, you're always going to, like for me, I'm always going to look back and reflect on every game that happens, and particularly the losses, you know, those are, um, those always hurt worse, and uh, my job is to, if I can alleviate pressure, where do I do that, where do I give our team the best chance to win, um, you know, the only thing that if I could go back that I felt greedy on was at the very end of the game, and instead of just deciding what we're going to do on fourth down, uh, to hold the timeout, you can run it. You're, you know, you do it on third down, and and I should have waited till fourth, you know. And at least you score, you hold on to that last timeout. But I, you know, I, I did. I, I got a little bit. I, I thought we were going to just pop the run, and uh, you know. But hindsight, if the smarter thing is that you know you throw it, and at least you know the clock stops or you score, and you hold the timeout for one more chance for another opportunity. Well, look, I would say that Antonio did a good job over there. I mean, so that 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 speaks for him. Um, you know, it's not an easy situation. I've been in that as an interim and to take over and, you know, you're trying to do it your way, but you're trying to keep it afloat. So, um, but I thought he did a tremendous job. He earned that. He earned another opportunity. So, you know, I, I'm sure I am I am part of that as far as not that, but just the, hey, maybe there is a thing with the ex-players, but... But I think those guys have done a good job. D'Amico's done a good job. He's earned that. So um, I just bring it up again. You can find good coaches that are ex-players and coaches who have never played the game at, at the NFL level. You can. So um, they're out there. You just got to find them. Yeah, I think it's huge because yeah, he is a depth player, but he's he's a starter for one of our core teams. I mean, he's you know we play with three phases, and so he's he's the best player in the league, and and one of the three um, you know units that we use to win games. Uh, we don't just play with two units, so it was pivotal. And and obviously the depth that he provides is is big, and because to me he's and to us. You know if you need him, he can go out there and you're really not going to miss a beat. He's smart, he's physical, he's tough, he's crafty, he's a ball guy. So, um, Brad and I both believe that depth is important. Depth is very important, more so than maybe the... You know, you know, this is the guy, you can check the box, true starter, but then you've got nobody else to follow. We would rather have the depth um, because this league, everybody gets hurt. That's just the nature of it. We, we've gone through it for three years. Um, but it's very important to us. And they got to be the right guys, and they got to be players that do. They, they fit a certain role.
Uh, yeah, look, uh, it's been a long time. How you doing? Good. Um, man, it, I would say it's hard because, you know, he was coming off the injury. He didn't get to play, um, but he got a ton of, by the end of the year, call it, um, you know, probably four months, not four months, three months, somewhere there of practice time and did a lot of the scout team, learned from Teddy Bridgewater, Jared Goff, um, and and so seven on seven, so a few team reps, you know, good on good. And, and the best I can tell you is there's growth. We saw growth. And that's encouraging. That's all we can ask at this point. So I don't think we entirely know what he is yet. There's not enough evidence, but I know this, we saw progress and that's, that's what we're looking for. Come to you. Yeah, I, well, I, I would say, uh, um, there is, yeah, there's some ad lib, you know, there's, and I can't say that you're using the same ad lib questions for every player, but I think more importantly, you want to know what happens if you throw a wrench into the cog, you know, how they, how they handle that. Um, I think, you know, helps a little bit. And look, I, I bring this up every time. So much about this process, this time of year, you know, we only get 20 minutes with them. And then even in the informals too, you don't, so you only have so much time, but what you can do is eliminate the guys that you know, man, this guy's got it. You know, like Jack Campbell, we mentioned last year, we, we knew within 15, 20 minutes, okay, he, he can figure ball out and he loves ball, he knows it. You know, he can problem solve. So you can check him off the box. Let's go on to the next one. And so just to be able to chalk check some of these guys off like okay we know these guys got it they understand it man there's something about them mentally and that way you can start focusing on the other you like the tape but man how, what is the fbi really do we really know um and so that's why this is this is vital Go. Yeah, well, look, I think, I think every coach on our staff, to me, I want them to feel like they're the head coach of their own room. They need to feel that way. And I think it's important that, that, uh, that you don't micromanage. You set the tone. You set the terms for what you're looking for. And let, let them do their job. And, and I feel like our coordinators do that in the front of the room. And so do our position coaches. And to me, I think of staff uh, no different than the players. Everybody's got a job, everybody's got a role, and all our strengths combined make us a very good unit. You know, we all complement each other. I actually learned it from that guy right there, so. Coach Joe Philbin was a big part of your coaching journey. He's now with the Raiders. What can Raiders fans expect to get him? I'm sorry, say again. Joe Philbin was Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I can tell you this, Joe is as detailed as they come. He's uh, very methodical. He's very detailed. Uh, there's nothing that's going to get overlooked, and he's going to make sure that um, that everybody around him, uh, the coaches to the players, thinks that way. Like there, there is nothing that he is not going to see, um, and because that's big to him. Details mean everything for him. So, uh, and he's he's a grinder. I mean, Coach Fieldman's a grinder. So. Um, you're going to get a guy who understands ball, he grinds, and he is very, very detail-oriented. Well, I, I think probably, I think probably the biggest thing is just having, you know, you've been in their shoes in different situations. You've been in their shoes during training camp, you know, after two or three weeks of practice, the second two a day, which it's really not two a days anymore, but, but you understand what that's like. You understand after the game, you understand disappointment, you understand uh, uh, on a whole different level, but when uh, you don't have a good game or the media's on you or your fans are on you or you just, you kind of understand uh, 
the pressures of it, the, the lifestyle of it. And, and I think that kind of helps you understand where they're at too. And so you can deal with them on much more of a psychological level than just X's and O's and, um, and personal. I think you, you know, you just know what that's like. And I think you can, by the way you talk to them, by the way you handle them, you, you can relate to them in that regard. No, I, I think that um, absolutely I think we can benefit from it. Like to me, you should benefit from every loss. You know, I, I think that if if the losses are they don't motivate you to not lose again and and for sure lose to not lose an NFC championship game, then something's wrong. Um, like to me that's that's the ultimate. I mean you, you just don't want to have that feeling anymore. Like you should do whatever it takes not to not to want to feel that, so you absolutely would benefit from that. Dan, how are you satisfied? Yeah, he he progressed, and uh, you know when he was able to come back off um, when we got him, you know what a week four of the season after the, you know he had the suspension, um, and all we asked of him was growth, just get better, just get a little bit better, and just become one of the guys, somebody that we can rely on in this offense. Just do your job. And that's exactly what he did. And you can see by the end of the year, we really felt like he started to come into his own. And he's, he is going to push to be a full-time starter now. And that's, that's what we're looking for. And we said it before, everybody grows at a different rate. And, um, and maybe it's taken him a little bit longer, but he is developing and he's growing, and he is certainly one of the team. You know, the kid, um, the kids come on. So we, we got high hopes for him. We see him continuing to grow as long as he gets back uh, and puts the work in like, like we believe he will because he's shown that. Um, he's only going to get better and better and better. Uh, I, I really didn't know, you know, I, here's what I know about Ben, like Ben's not, um, when, when Ben is focused on, on this, he's focused on this and nothing's going to move that for him. And so once, you know, once this item is done, he can close it, then he'll move on to the next one. So, um, you know, I, I don't know the whole interview process, all those, but I know this. His, his whole focus was on helping us win, and it wasn't about preparing for interviews. Um, and so I guess you, you just never know how they're going to play out. Um, you know, I, I know this. He's, he's more than capable of being a head coach. He's qualified. Um, by the way, people have hired in this league before. He's more than qualified. And but I, here's what I love about Ben. Ben's not going to do anything that he doesn't want to do, that he really wants to do, or that he doesn't feel like he's ready for. So I'm glad we got him back. He's one of us. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't look, and I get it because it hasn't happened yet. I mean, just people saying that, but but I don't get it because, um, I mean, take the NFC Championship game. I thought he played good game for us. Uh, you know, he gave us a chance to win that, and and I just feel like, man, since he's been here, I've seen a I've seen a quarterback who's gotten better and better and better, and has grown every year. And I would say who's gotten better under pressure every year, and really just rise to the challenge. Um, and he's more and more confident he's more comfortable um so i've said this before to me jared golf is a winning quarterback you can win you can win in this league with that guy and uh you can't say that for a lot of guys so i'm glad that he's here i'm glad he's he's ours and uh and you could argue he's grown more than a lot of players we've had people don't maybe don't always see that but he really has man for a guy who's been in this league a little bit but has continued to improve uh it's credit to him all right, thanks.